um, I'm going to talk to you here a little bit optimistically. I really think that uh, if we were standing here five years from now, if we really put our backs into it and we really held our council accountable, I really strongly believe that Hamilton could be Ontario's most bicycle-friendly community. And, uh, and this is coming from the guy that manages the program. So I want to talk a little bit about why and why a complete streets vision for our city is so important. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. I'm a blowhard, so of course you can. So where we're at now, it was kind of touched on, so I'm just going to breeze through this. We've got a cycling master plan. It was approved in 2009. This is our current cycling network. It's absolutely terrible in the lower city. Uh, as you can see, there's a yellow dotted line on Barton there. The yellow means it's an unsigned cycling route. The dotted orange means it's a high traffic volume, uh, narrow lanes facility. So unsigned, high traffic volume, narrow lanes. That's the only thing right now uh, linking 50,000 people in the lower city to active transportation. Pretty terrible. Um, luckily, uh, you know this is what Cannon Street looks like now. Um, this is another picture of it. And luckily, by the end of the year, this is kind of what it's going to look like. So we are moving forward at a pace that has never been done before in Hamilton when it comes to active transportation, especially cycling. Uh, bike share is going to be coming in this year. So the forward momentum that we are carrying in to 2014 is absolutely huge. The pedestrian mobility plan sets the precedent for routine accommodation. And this is what a complete streets policy is all about, is routine accommodation. We've got a growing conversation around complete streets around community safety, around moving people around in different ways. It was front page of the spec the other day, a complete street, front page of the spectator. That would never have happened even two years ago. We've had op-eds written by our CEO of the Chamber of Commerce. We've had strong statements of support from council. We've really got a conversation around this moving forward. Uh, and we need to make sure that we carry that into the transportation master plan review, which is coming up this year. And more importantly, we need to make sure that we hold all of our politicians accountable in the election in 2014. The municipal election is going to be the most important municipal election in the last 50 years in Hamilton's history. This is absolutely a tipping point for our city. And if we put the wrong people in those chairs, we are going to get lapped by the communities that are willing to put the right people in. Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph, uh, Burlington even, Mississauga, they're all realizing the values of this and they're moving forward. If we don't make our community more complete and more accessible for everyone, we're going to start losing some of the talent that we've worked so darn hard to retain here in our city. I really think that our weakness is our strength here in Hamilton. Um, our weakness in Hamilton is all that roadway, all those excess lanes. And what those do is they'll send a message to drivers that say, that speed limit that says 50 kilometers an hour, forget that. Just why? 75 kilometers an hour going through our arterial roadways. 72 kilometers an hour is the average tracked speed on Cannon Street. Can you believe that? That's the average. So for every person doing 60, there's someone doing 80 down that street, rumbling past residential neighborhoods. 11 schools lie along Cannon Street from the length from Kenilworth all the way to Queen. 11 schools within a kilometer of Cannon Street. 50,000 people. Think about how many students. 72 kilometers an hour. That's the average speed of that arterial roadway. Look at all this excess lane capacity. This is Main Street. This is the middle of the day. Here's Wellington Street. This could be any time of day. Has anyone ever seen Wellington Street backed up? Four lanes, one way. This is crazy. Wilson Street, same thing. I, uh, I heard it the other day at the Ontario Bike Summit, and I'm going to start doing it now. I hate the word road diet because road diet insinuates you're taking something away. How about we say, let's right-size our roads? That's something everyone can get behind. So if we start right-sizing our roads and making sense of the infrastructure that we have, that's when we're really gonna start seeing some positive change. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of the, the challenges that we face. And the biggest challenge that we face is, is we really need to change our priorities. So I kind of, uh, it was written in about our current plans as a ceiling. So the 2009 Cycling Master Plan featured a couple things, and one of them was Councillor Veto. Uh, this was put in by Council. We've had two bike lane projects actually vetoed by the Councillor, and, uh, and so it's a pretty significant concern for someone like me. The other thing is if it's not on the list, it's not considered, and we saw that really evidently with the Queen Street Hill reconstruction this year. So Queen Street Hill, Beckett Drive, completely closed, completely resurfaced, completely redone, and guess what? It looks exactly the same as it did before. So this was a missed opportunity for sure because we are really lacking in active transportation mountain access. We're really lacking in giving people the opportunity to get up and down that escarpment 
uh, safely and actively, and that's a real miss. We need to start thinking about infrastructure as a 20-year investment. So a lot of what Sarah was saying, all these things that get done, these resurfacing projects, um, when they get resurfaced, restriped, if we aren't thinking about what we want our community to look like 20 years in the future and how that infrastructure plays in, we're missing an opportunity. It's plain and simple. So complete streets policy really could change that curb-to-curb -curb thinking. This is King Street East after it was resurfaced this year. Again, not on the list, not considered. They went back to four lanes of traffic, one way, completely inappropriate. When you take a look at the number of vehicles that travel that facility and the number of lanes they have, it's a completely inappropriate use of the land space. This kind of thing wasn't even put on the city's radar. This is what Main Street could look like with a complete streets approach. And Main Street could, or King Street rather, could remain one way if you do this kind of thing and still be a complete street. Complete streets don't have to be two ways. It's not about what direction traffic is moving in, it's how it's moving. And I've always felt that that's a very important thing we need to talk about here in Hamilton. We can have one-way complete streets. We see them all over the world. In New York City on Park, uh, Prospect Park West, in Vancouver on Robson Street. Lots of these complete streets that include facilities for all road users that still remain one way. And we can do it here in Hamilton. We just need to start thinking about it. So what challenges do we face? Well, we've got this infrastructure deficit. Here's a pothole. Does anyone in here see potholes bigger than this on their street every day? Because uh, obviously this winter was brutal. We've got a ton of car-centric mentality, of course, much like all the North American context, and inertia. Every time you want to get one of these projects through, it feels like you're pushing a boulder up the hill. We had 2,500 signatures in the community for Yes We Can It, and we still had a four-hour council debate about it because they were concerned about the cost of the 0.08% of the transportation budget that it would cost to implement it and the 0.3% that it would cost of the roads maintenance budget, uh, winter clearing budget to maintain it all through the winter. And that was, uh, so that was, you know, we're really facing this inertia. When people dig in their deals, it's a lot easier for them to kind of just keep with the status quo. But if we don't see what we can do to change these challenges, then just sitting there and talking about our challenges is pretty useless. So I say seeing what our challenges are is useless unless we can think of ways out of them. So we need to start talking about, when we talk about complete streets uh, and right-sizing our roads, we need to start talking about how we do more with less. We accept the infrastructure deficit. Yes, we have a lot of roads that need a lot of repair, but guess what's not going to get us out of that? Just repairing those roads and doing the same old thing that's got us into that infrastructure deficit for the last 50 years. We need to start hammering away at this point. You can move more people with less road space, with active transportation, and with transit than you could ever do with single occupancy vehicles. We're sitting at about 85% single occupancy vehicle rate in Hamilton right now. That's terrible for a city our size. And we need to start changing, otherwise our infrastructure deficit will never get tackled. Straight and simple because we can't lower taxes and keep filling, just filling potholes and maintaining the status quo. Those two things are not, they're, they're not congruent. You cannot do both, simple as that. We need to start focusing on moving it from the special interest into the public interest. This guy here, uh, we like to call him kind of, you know, the, the padded shorts, mirror helmet type crowd. Those are not sympathetic people. No one cares what that guy thinks because that guy's gonna cycle anywhere, anytime, doesn't matter. When you start showing them pictures like that, people start to care. That is families, children, women, people of disadvantaged, uh, you know, Sarah was talking about the equity issue. That's when people start to care, when we can connect this to equity and to the public interest and to the fact that every dollar spent on cycling infrastructure pays it back into the community four to five times, whereas every dollar spent on roadway takes it out of the community. This is where we start to win when we talk complete streets. I'm gonna close you with one of my favorite quotes that I heard from the National Bike Summit down in Washington, DC. It says, I don't wanna force anybody to get out of their car. I just want the choice to leave mine behind every now and again. So this is what we need to talk about when we're talking about complete streets. It's not about giving up anything. It's about giving people back the choice to choose how they move around. So I'll close on that. If you have any questions, um, I should probably take them now if we have any time because I have to meet.